Welcome to the, the PC TV Show, Show, formerly PC TV Magazine. I'm Emily Dorenzo. And I'm Matthew Smith, and we're excited to be back for yet another year of news, sports, entertainment, and hullabaloo. <laughs> yes, and speaking of hullabaloo, the campus has been abuzz with pride about our newest facility. That's right. The new Ruin Center for the Humanities was officially opened with a dedication on October 5th. Here with the tour of the Ruin Center is Melissa Bryan. Hi, this is Melissa Bryan for PCTV News, and we're here for the official tour of the Ruane Center for the, for the Humanities. Here we'll hear from Father Shanley as well as executive members of the planning committee about the building, and you'll hear some special secrets. So let's take a look inside. Uh, and the principal changes involved having more seminar time, uh, more time for active discussion, uh, more time for writing. So. Uh, we lessened the importance of big lectures mm -hmm. and really enhanced the importance of discussion, dialogue, writing, and the seminar. So what we needed when we finished was a, a building that would have the flexibility that this building has to do multiple things. My favorite part, oddly enough, might be the hallways. They're nice and wide and spacious and comfortable. All right. um, but for the academic parts of the building, the seminar rooms. I love the seminar rooms with the big round tables, very conducive to discussion. My, one of the, my favorite things in the first week that this opened when students came back is on the very first day of class. There actually were students in here doing what those folks are doing over at that table with their computers and reading and stuff like that. And that's exactly what the planning committee for this building intended. I love being in the building when the students are coming and going from class. Mm -hmm. And my office is right across from the great room, and so at tw I don't have to look at my watch. I know when it's 20 after the hour because there's this sort of, but it's really wonderful. It's so we hope you enjoyed the tour. Be sure to check out the piece in the Providence Journal written about this tour of the Ruane Center. Thank you for watching. This has been Melissa Bryan for PCTV News, signing off. You know, it's certainly easier to get up for an 8.30 Civ knowing it's in one of those fancy new seminar rooms. Yeah but I couldn't get through the door without that Starbucks coffee. <laughs> I'm a Dunkin' guy. Well, either way, nothing beats having a coffee and watching some Friar sports. <laughs> Let's take it over to DJ and Umar with a Friar update right now. Hey guys, welcome to Friar Update, where we keep you informed on how all our sports teams at PC are doing. My name is Umar Malik. And I'm DJ Anderson. This past Saturday, men's soccer faced number 11 St. John's and won 1-0 on senior Anthony Bauman's penalty kick in the 77th minute. This was the team's last game on Glay Field as they played their opening game on Hendrickson Field yesterday against number four Georgetown. The Friars were certainly up to the challenge of christening the new turf field as they fought all throughout the game but eventually fell 1-0 to one of the best teams in the country. This marks the team's first loss in conference, putting them at 2-1 in the Big East and 7-2-2 two two overall. The men's hockey team will also open up in a newly renovated stadium playing the first game this Friday at 7 p.m. Schneider Arena. The team comes into the game ranked number 14 in the country and will take on number 11 Minnesota State in a two-game home series. Because this is the first game of the season, expectations will be high as well as the energy level in Schneider. All eyes will be on sophomore goaltender John Gillies who will look to continue his dominance at the D1 level, coming off National Rookie of the Year honors. He will anchor a potentially intimidating Friar defense and will hopefully lead them to victory. This upcoming three-day weekend, many Friar athletes definitely will be busy with conference matchups and meets. Most teams will be away for the weekend, including men's and women's soccer, volleyball, and field hockey. Around campus, look for the men's hockey team on Friday and Saturday night against Minnesota State in its home opener series. Both start times are at 7 p.m. On Saturday at 2 p.m. and Sunday at 1 p.m., the women's hockey team will take on Mercyhurst College in the first home series of the regular season. All four games will take place at the new Schneider Arena. Come out and support your fellow Friars. Thanks again for listening to Friar Update. I'm DJ Anderson. And I'm Umar Malik. Pardon the interruption, I'm Angelo Marciano. And I'm Wesley Trask. Welcome to PCI, Providence College Interrupted. Wes, it's great to be back on campus, and the MLB season is already over with the playoffs having begun. The Red Sox have advanced, waiting for their next opponent. Who would you rather see the Red Sox face in the next round, the Oakland A's or the Detroit Tigers? I think I would definitely rather play the Oakland Athletics. They are not as experienced in the postseason compared to the Detroit Tigers, who won the ALCS last year. Coupled with the fact that they'll have to fly all the way from the West Coast to Boston to start the series on Friday, it makes for a tough series for the Oakland Athletics. I totally agree with you, Wes. I do think that the Detroit Tigers would pose the greater 
challenge for the Red Sox with great offensive power in that lineup with perennial MVP and triple crown winner last year, Miguel Cabrera, along with the likes of Prince Fielder, Victor Martinez, Torrey Hunter. It's a great lineup. And throw on top of that, you got two aces in that pitching staff in Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer. It's going to be tough if the Detroit Tigers win tonight. On the other side, the Oakland A's, a bunch of no names, which have succeeded because of the money ball aspect of Billy Bean. But it's going to be pretty tough if the Detroit Tigers advance. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Tigers, they've had an off season this year, but this, despite that, they made the playoffs, and they're always a challenge with all that talent. You can never rule out talent. Mm. On the other side, uh, in the NL National League, you have the St. Louis Cardinals going to face off against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Who do you think is going to pull away and win and go into the World Series? I'm going to go with the Dodgers in this series just because they have all the talent. And this is kind of, I feel like this might be their year for the National League after years of mediocrity. Mm -hmm. It'll be quite interesting because if the Red Sox advance to the World Series and the Dodgers are there, they just had a mega trade in the offseason, sending Carlo, uh, Carl Crawford, Adrian Gonzalez, and Josh Beckett of the Red Sox to the Dodgers. And you know, the, both of the teams were terrible last year. And if they were made the World Series, it would be a huge uh, sign of baseball that you know, one year you can be bad and the next year you can be great. But I, I kind of disagree with you. I do not think the Dodgers will make the uh, World Series. I like the Cardinals for, for uh, many of reasons. They just had Wayne Wright pitch an excellent game, along with tons of young arms in that uh, pitching staff, along with the great offense with Carlos Beltran leading the way, showing that he is one of the best postseason players in the last 10 years. So look for a Red Sox-St. Louis Cardinals World Series, and I like the Red Sox coming out on top. What do you think? I also like the Red Sox. I feel like there's nothing they can stop them. Either way, as long as the Red Sox are involved in the World Series, it's going to make for some great baseball in late October. Well, thanks, Wes, and uh, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoy the show. You know what I love about sports? What's that, Emily? When PCTV covers them. Do you know what I like about PCTV? What's that? Our entertainment department. And here they are with their newest piece, Election Connection. Wait, Matt, would you vote for me if I was running for president? <laughs> Not if this guy was running. Let's check them out right now. Let's. Good afternoon, my fellow Americans. My name is Brian Allen, player hater Bloom, and I am your next representative for Student Congress. I hail from the great state of Long Island for the sole purpose of representing you, my fellow students, in all matters of education, campus involvement, and trying to get that one girl from Civ class to go out with you. I am the man who will bring along change for the better. You want more campus activities? Bippity boppity bocce ball. More options at Ray? Abrica Danish pastries. Tuition too high? It probably is, and I don't think there's anything that I can do about it. But I will march down to the president's office, tell him my demands, and refuse to leave until he threatens to call security. I am that dedicated. A vote for me is a vote for justice, for freedom, for America. And if you don't want to vote for me, do it for your mom, because parents love me. I also have the support of Coach Cooley. He was driving me around campus the other day when I told him that I was running for representative. He said, who are you and how did you get into my car? Now, he didn't actually say that he had me as representative, but when he forcibly removed me from his Range Rover, I knew I felt a deeper connection. We're even having dinner this Wednesday. I hope he likes Italian. What makes me the most bestest candidate PC has ever seen? I will stand up against discrimination, even if I have to get on my tippy toes. I will represent you so hard that Congress is going to have to restart the government. I promise to take PC to the land of milk and honey, which I'm pretty sure is Alumni Hall. We can all go together afterwards. I'm buying. Not really. I got like $20 left on my card. I really got to talk to my mom about that. But. You'll buy for me, and I'll repay you in Congress. Regardless, my duration as representative will be happier than a box full of kittens. Really cute kittens, too. I also plan on instituting a dress code of all vineyard vine with the punishment of expulsion. It's not enough that half the campus looks pretentious. This is a team effort, people. I could make promises that I won't be able to keep, and that I will. Each dorm gets a new iPhone 5C. Free tickets to the Super Bowl. A get out of jail free card for the first 100 callers. Act now and I'll even throw in test answers. I got connections and you have one in me. I'm, I'm 
trying to wink. I can't. I'm just going to blink at you really hard. Okay, you got the message. Good. Do you know how many babies I will kiss in order to win this election? I might even adopt one myself to show my dedication. And name him Freedom. Because this is America. And that's what I believe in. And I believe in you. That when you go in to write who you want as representative, God will come down from heaven and whisper into your ear, Hey, that Brian kid? He's Gucci. And if God says I'm Gucci, who am I to judge what brand I most represent? Personally, I think I'm McDonald's. Because you're loving it, and I'm loving me. And who doesn't? Except for my ex Kathy, but we are not getting into her. Also, I understand that everyone here is a huge fan of the PGA. So, my father has agreed to go and bring Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson right here onto campus to... What the hell is this golf party everyone keeps talking about? Anyway, my name is Brian Bloom. I am your man, because I am the man. I am Brian Bloom, and I approve this message. You know what, Emily? On second thought, maybe I would vote for you for president. Thank you. And don't forget to join us on October 23rd in McPhail's for our Halloween trivia night. 9 to 12.30, free t-shirts and pizza. That sounds like fun. That also concludes our show. Please tune in next time for more of the PCTV show. Goodbye, Friars. Goodbye.